Hey friends, what's up and welcome back to this new video on the channel. In today's episode, I want to show you some media related features like using animations, using SVGs and so on. And we will dive into it right away. So let's start out with animations. If you have a nice layout, a nice website, you want to probably also work with animations because they add some kind of interactivity to your website. And we can see, for example, on this example, that there are texts sliding in from the left to the right. And I think that sometimes like a really awesome feature because as I said, it's forcing some interactivity, some dynamic, and I really enjoy that. If we click on edit side right there, we can uh, explore the layout a little bit more and we see that we have some highlighted blue animated function. If we click on that, we get a very big set of different pre-created animations that we can choose from. You can also, of course, just click on none if you don't want to have it in here and we get a little preview. So we have the slide in selected right now. And if you click on the play function, we get the preview of it flying in. Of course, there are different kind of uh, animations. Let's go through all of them. We have bounce in and it's really bouncing in right there. We have glide in fade in. I really enjoy fade in. We have float in, which is some kind of fade in and uh, slide in. Then we have expand in, spin in. <laughs> this is kind of crazy. Fly in, turn in, arc in, puff in, fold in, flip in, reveal and slide in. So you see there are a couple of crazy animations in here too. If you have any website projects where you would like to use those, you can do that of course, but I like to stick with a couple of those basic ones, like maybe the, the fade in or the slide in that we already have right here. In our example file, I will now show you how you can add those animations to your layers. So we have a title right here and we have this animation feature right there. Of course, we could also do the same with an image that we drag into our layout, like just like that. We can stretch the image to fit all of our content, uh, like our section right there. And now we can simply add an anim animation to it, like the fade animation, as I said, I really like this kind of animation. Uh, and we can customize our title in here, make it look a little bit better on this background like just like that change the font size make it bigger and like, let's have some nice title right here like mountain whatever and if you want to create the animation for that you could now just click on the icon and then change the animation or choose from one of those that we have in here as i said i enjoy the fade in animation if we are happy with the result that we have right here and we want to test it out, we can click on preview. Wait a second. And we see that both of these elements like the image and also the, the mountain text title will also reveal using the fade in animation. We can preview it again and boom, here we got it. Now, regarding SVGs, if you upload an SVG, you can do kind of cool stuff with it. That's why we will now go over to quick add and we can see that I have some uh, side files right here and I already have an icon card SVG in here. Let me now use that in one of the sections that we have right here, position it in the middle. And here we can change the basic shape. If we click on that, we can just choose a different one and customize it if we want to. We can click on settings and in here we can add a link. We can add a Google description and also change some of the proportions when resizing. And regarding design here, we can now change the color and opacity of our shape. So we don't have to go into, for example, our graphic apps like sketch or so and give the shape a different color. We can just do it from the menu that we have in here. Choose a different color like this green and then close it. We can also, of course, add a border or add a shadow. And in this case, it's going to add it like just like that, which looks a bit ugly in this example. But I wanted to show you how you can customize and upload SVGs and use them in your layouts. Now I want to show you something that's also very important and that's called focal point. If we have an image right here and 
check out the focal point setting, we see that there's a little window popping up, which helps us to determine a focal point. And a focal point helps us to select the area of the image you want to remain visible when it's resized. So imagine you have this photo right here and we are going to resize it on the tablet view or the mobile view. We maybe want to crop the image because it's very big or something like that. And in this case, we can set a focal point. In this case, it's positioned in the top left corner, which means that if we crop this image or if it's resized, the top left part will be where we will focus on. So I will show to you how it will look on the tablet view if we go in here. You see it's got resized and it got cut off, but it's positioned at the top and the left part is visible, is still visible. If we go back into our uh, website view and we change the focal point, for example, to the bottom like that and go back into our tablet, you will now see that the bottom part the, the bottom part of the graphic is focused on. So if you want to work with this feature, it's really just straight and simple. Just click on your image, head over to focal point, and next up, select the area that should be visible when it got resized on a mobile view. What you can also do with the focal point, of course, is to go into your mobile view. And if you don't like how it's displayed right here, you can click on focal point right there, and then select the top area, and you will see the change immediately. You can also, of course, select the bottom area and this will change in this way too. And the change that we made right here to the mobile layout won't be made to the tablet or to the desktop version because these changes are made top down inside editor. So if I make a change on the website uh, version, it will change for the tablet and for the mobile. If I only do it for the tablet version in here, it will only change for the tablet and the mobile version. And if I do it in a mobile view, it will only change for the mobile breakpoints. Now for the last part of this video, I would like to show you some very cool things that you can do with uh, background images. And these will make your websites even more dynamic and interactive. And they are about parallax and reveal. So if we check out and preview this website right here, we can see that the photo part of it has such a big background image and it's in this case just statically staying in its position but if we go back into edit side and select the image we can now go on to settings and check out scroll behavior now here in scroll behavior we can now choose between parallax and reveal and if we click on parallax and it's updating click on preview you will see that we made a very cool change to it if you've never seen parallax before uh, this is a very great feature and we can see once we scroll up a bit and scroll down that the background image of our photo part right here is scrolling with us. So we have a nice little dynamic now enabled in the bottom part of our website and I think it looks super cool. But what we can also do is to not just use the parallax feature but also use the reveal feature. The reveal feature is similar to parallax, but a bit different and you will see it right now. So we have our background image right there. And if I scroll, you now see that it's statically staying in its position, but it's floating around behind our foreground. So it's behaving like it's really sticky in the background of our website and it's revealing itself to us once we scroll all the way down. So this is a very nice feature and I really love that Editor X features Parallax and the reveal part. Thank you so much for tuning in to today's video. If you liked it, hit the thumb up button. If you never subscribed to my channel, make sure to hit subscribe. Or if you have any questions, of course, hit them down in the comment section of this video. Thank you so much for tuning in and we will see us in the next one. Bye.